You have to tell me this. A feast in every way. But I don't know when he got you, so you probably should probably. I can just <laughs> smell what you're going to put on here. I feel cheesy. Cheesy. <laughs> Bring me the meat. <laughs> Going on, and we are going to teach you all about charcuterie boards 101 and how to put them together with sweet, savory, salty, and all that goodness. And quickly. And quickly. This is Lise. She is a really good friend of mine. She's a realtor here in Daybreak, Salt Lake area, St. George, wherever you want to buy and sell a house. That's your girl. All right, so charcuterie boards have quite a few things on them cheeses, meats, pickles, olives, all the work, even the yummy goodness of chocolate and nuts. So, looks good. Okay. All right. So, I'm going to pass to Lise and she's going to make it beautiful. Oh, okay. So, I think the first thing that you do is you start with your larger objects. And so, we have a few things already put together in the bowls. And so, we're going to put these on the charcuterie board. And this will be the main focus. Usually, if you have sauces and things like that, then that works. Okay, and then we're gonna fill in with the other larger objects, usually the wedges of cheese. One thing that you could do that's really fun is you could make little flags or little things identifying what types of cheese that you're using. And smoked Gouda. This is smoked Gouda. Which is smoking so good for your health. Yeah. And then we have a beautiful brie cheese right here. Mm -hmm. All right. And then I keep messing. Okay, no, you're let's good. put this around like right up here. Haverty dill. Haverty dill is really good because it has that sweet. Oh, and that's so good. And you can already tell um, it's looking good and it also is smelling good. So when people come in, it's one of the senses you want to appeal to all of those senses. So it smells good, it appeals to the eyes. We're not gonna put all the colors in one area. Why don't we put the grapes kind of cradling okay. this? Let's do that. That would be beautiful, perfect. Okay, see, it's so quick and easy and coming together already. We're gonna put some more things on there. Should we put some of the yellow cheese here? Yeah. And maybe put some of the pickles Oh, that is perfect. That is perfect. I'm gonna, many hands make light work. Yes, it does. So we're going to put these here. Oh, you know what? And then nearby we should have um, the honey. We've got to have the honey. This is one of the best ideas, what you got, instead of just having honey, the actual honeycomb. It's yes. amazing. All right, so where, I think we should leave this one. I think right here. Beautiful. Beautiful, yeah. And since it's now down, you don't have to worry about the handle so much. You can put some of the little crackers here. And you want to have a lot of different flavors. This one is good because it's a sourdough, so it's gonna taste really good. But we've also mixed some onion and other flavors as well. Um, onion ones. Perfect. Um, why don't we go ahead and put the meat in and then we can kind of fill in with the crackers like right at the end. We'll just tuck them in where they can. Sort of like the accessory of the charcuterie board. I'll give you the salami. I mean, that is pepperoni. Not That's salami. okay. You were just full of bologna there for a minute. I am. I, I know. think we want bologna on the board. I know. Oh my gosh, no bologna here. This is like so fabulous. And again, you want to choose some different flavored meats Different color, different texture, prosciutto. prosciutto. Oh, amazing. amazing. And then we can tuck some of the crackers in here. And then, yeah, we have, oh, we need some rat, the raspberries too. Yeah. Oh, and pecans. Okay, when you're picking the pecans, one thing, um, and she did such a brilliant job with this because we have some of these glazed pecans, but they're not overly sweet and they're not salted. One thing with your charcuterie board is if you get something that is just 
too overpowering, mm -hmm. like the salt. And then you mix it with something else that's salty and it's just not good. Okay, you've got the, um, the little apple slices. Perfect. Should we stick those right there? Yes. Perfect, and kind of fan them out. And then off to the side, you'll have small spoons and toothpicks so that people can navigate your charcuterie board with ease. And let's do some almonds. I put a little bit on the brie. Okay, we'll just get that later. And for a little pop of flavor, with cheese. This is homemade chocolate. Where did this come from? This, this amazing lady made it. This is actually by a friend of ours. She is Cocapelli Chocolate. She makes these amazing, also like chocolate squares you can make hot chocolate with. They're amazing. We're gonna put her link in our video on the bottom. You can visit her link, you can send her a message, but her chocolate is absolutely phenomenal. Oh, it's to die for. Yes. Have you made, it's so amazing. You just heat up the milk. You put it in there, it dissolves, and it is the most thick, rich chocolate. It is truly amazing. So Coca Pelli, that was Coca it, correct? Coca Pelli, yes. Amazing. And then we have these little knives of, you know, great for cutting the cheese with. Ha ha ha. Okay, so kind of perfect. We could put some more of the crackers, I think, in here, and then you can kind of just fill in if you see empty spaces. Go ahead and fill in because this is supposed to be a full kind of smorgasbord yep. uh, charcuterie. Say that 10 times fast, right? And uh, then when people come in, one of the things that we have done is we've got cheese here and cheese here. So if you have this place kind of at the end or at the corner of a table, people can come and work through one side while somebody else is coming down the other side. And that way it's just not one person kind of picking over things. It has a flow to it and a presentation. And another thing we've done is you've got the green olives here and the green pickles here and a dash of the green and the apple here. And that kind of separates the colors. Another thing that you can do that I do with my pies is we have the Granny Smith apple, but if you have a honey crisp and kind of put that in between, that's perfect because some people find the Granny Smith a bit overpowering and so, when I make my apple pies, I always mix a little bit of the Honeycrisp with the Granny Smith, so it's not an overpowering tartness. So, Shannon, yes. are you just amazing every day at everything you do? Mm, yes. I no. thought so, because every no. time you put something together, it's just amazing. It must be the Southern in us. It's got to be the Southern in us. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, guys. Thanks.